Hey everybody, Shell Broadnax here with another episode of Stager Talk. And today we are talking to Texas's, Texas's, how do you say Texas's? Is that right? <laughs> Texas's own Max Ruth then. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How about you? I'm super excited to have you on. Um, this is, this is not, let's just, let's just preface this by saying we always want to talk about creative things at RisaCon. Um, so we have creative stuff and we have a lot of business things and color is one of those subjects that we have almost every year. But this year we're tackling color just a little bit differently because you're going to talk about the significance of color and how it differs across cultures because stagers, you're staging for everybody in this country and in North America, wherever you're located, there's different people in different cultures and color means something different, which I had never even thought about it. I just know about a lot of color that if you don't know your color and you put the wrong color on the wall, mm, it's an expensive mistake to make. I've done it. Um, so let's talk a little bit about you. I know you are a color expert. Can you just tell everybody just a little bit about your background and why you love color so much. Um, I started off um, in 2009 as a stager. I did the HSR course with yeah. Audra and um, I was very excited about it, very passionate about it. But um, as I worked in, in the homes, I, I always realized that there's something, something that bugs me. You know, in, in homes that's already built and already made and we have to stage it. And there's always some to, something to fix. And at one point I started analyzing it and I thought it's either scale, proportion or color. And I realized that there's so many different or wrong colors in the house and I didn't know how to fix it. I didn't know how to fix it. And um, it, it was in 2012, I think, when I literally went climbing a mountain and I discussed this with my husband. I said to him, I don't know what it is. I'm not going to, I like the staging. It wasn't my passion. I realized that, but I didn't want to move out of this world. I wanted to stay in the creative world. And as we came down that mountain, I said to him, you know what? I struggle with color and I couldn't find anyone to help us with color in our house. If not, you know, why not me? Why can I not go and study color? And literally we came down the mountain in August and that I think it was November. I did my first color course um, and I never stopped. It, it's just a fascinating world. I love that story, but I got to ask, what mountain were you on? Kilimanjaro. <laughs> That's all a different story. <laughs> oh my yes. goodness. So, you know, do you know Christine Ray? Yeah, yeah, yeah. From okay. CSP. Christine's sister yeah. climbed some mountain. I don't know if it was that one or not, but she did a whole talk. I saw Christine's sister do a speech on climbing this giant mountain. It's like the highest mountain in the world. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's that one or something else, but she did some big stuff. Um, I am horribly fascinated by that. And it was like all in the snow. So were you in the snow doing it? No, Kilimanjaro is the highest mountain in Africa. So we started, it was five days up, two days down. But um, the snow cap is disappearing because of global you know, climate changes. But we, we, it was cold, it was freezing. But the higher you go, the colder it gets. Right. So it wasn't cold from, we looked like little Michelin men. <laughs> you know, it, was, it, was, it was a different experience. I bet. But very eye-opening and very challenging. And I thought, you know, if I can do that, I can do anything. It sounds like those cheesy motivational speeches. But really, I thought if I can climb a mountain, I'm capable of anything. Okay, so that was what, one thing that I was, when I was preparing for the show today to talk to you, I was thinking, can anybody just be taught this? Is this something that you can do no. if it doesn't come naturally to you? Because you remind me a lot of, of me where I have said in my past, in my career, where I saw something, um, I didn't like it, like either like somebody gave me a service that it wasn't the best. And I was like, oh, yeah you got bad service, I can do better. And then I go out and I start, you know, doing wedding cakes and baby shower cakes for everybody that I knew because I thought I could do it better. And I went and I learned things. And just to know, like color for me, I like color, but it's not my passion. Like I would never pursue anything in the color field. But the thing that I love about what you, what you talk about is that the epiphany that one has, which I think is very important. My God, we could do a whole nother session on this, Max, because mm -hmm. for people, they kind of sit around and they mill in things for a while. Like, I'm not really sure what I need to do. What's yeah. my next step? Yep. And it's like, why not me? And for you to have that and you say that, you know, staging wasn't your passion, which is fine, but you found your passion. That mm. 
is the story. That's the thing I think so many people need to walk away with is that you've got to find your passion. And if you're loving color and, you know, just in the beginning, you might even have a natural propensity towards color and understanding it. It doesn't. But you can go and you can get, it's just, it's such a huge subject. Um, you just can't know it from watching YouTube videos or, you know, watching something no. on, on internet or anything. You really have to immerse into it. Uh, very true. And, and to come back to your question, when you started this is like, can anyone learn it? I come from a medical background. I was an OR nurse. I was recruited from South Africa to come and work in this country as a nurse. Okay, so coming from a medical field into the creative field is a it's 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 a huge huge difference. And you know, starting off as a stager, and I you know got involved into interior design. I didn't know how to choose color. I I chose like nomadic desert and Kilim beige and whatever the colors were at that point because it was still the Tuscan brown trend because everybody else chose it I didn't know but I knew that that intuitive feeling that I don't like this or I didn't like that I didn't know how to fix it and why I didn't like it and that is what's so fascinating is I the first and the second and the third course I learned how to how to look at color and that is my my mission now is I want to teach people how to choose color how to look at color and choose it not just you know get your list of 10 different colors that's out there because this and that designer said you know those are the colors you've got to understand why you choose a color and i had to learn that i didn't know this just instinctively so it's right. a process but um you know and the more i learned about um design color i i started going into the psychology of color and then i thought okay what about color forecasting and then i got involved into the color forecasting i just finished a two-day workshops last week uh, workshop last week where we are working on the color forecasting for 2025 and then i got involved with color notations which is a whole different beast so i didn't um stick with just you know, color uh, from a design perspective. I wanted to get it from everywhere. And I cannot say that I know everything of everything, of course not, but um, it definitely gave me a wider perspective of, of, of color as a whole. And that you can't just isolate it because, you know, color is everything. We're surrounded by color. And, and we've got to understand that, especially, for, you know, with, with cultural differences. Absolutely. So let's talk about that for a little bit. So once somebody really understands the color and you walk into somebody's home, I would imagine, because if you understand the color, maybe the colors they've chosen may tell you a little bit more about them in general, right? Yeah, yeah, and no, sometimes I think people just choose a color because, you know, my friend it. liked it. Yeah, they, but what, what I learned is I've got to step away from what I like, which is very difficult because we all, you know, color is an opinion. We've all got an opinion that's not black and white. And I started working, you know, Austin is a dot-com world. We recruit people from everywhere to come and work, um, you know, in, in, in the cities. And I started working with a lot of people um, that, you know, from the Indian culture. And they want eight colors, nine colors, 10 colors. And it's like, no, 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 we just do two colors or three colors. And I had to break away from that belief and that it's, it's not by tradition. I had to get into their mind and see what's important for them, especially right. when it comes to prayer rooms. I had to be very careful not to make the wrong comment or to judge any colors just because I don't like, you know, and I love orange. I'm going to say orange, but, you know, I love orange, but um I, I cannot judge those colors because I have to understand what's going on in their mind and their traditions and their customs and their beliefs, right. um, which of course opened a whole new can of worms when it comes to color. And I thought I better get a, a, a good understanding of what's going on since we are working in this global melting pot. Um, and that is what I want to go and share, you know, that we need to understand these people and we've got to step away from what we like. Yeah. What I love about this is that th the more I hear you talk, it's like I envision this business that somebody could add the color consultations into their business. So we're not talking, you know, you're not going to get nine colors in a house in a room necessarily if you're going to sell it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. when you're doing this for the customization of your client, that is just key because for me, I have an appreciation for color. I like an eclectic style. Um, like when I, my parents home, yeah, me too. they mm. travel, they've got more tchotchkes than I don't even know what to do with <laughs> every time I go over there. My dad's like, do you want something? And I'm like, 
Mm, no. I got a couch one time, so that was nice. But I, you know, all these little things, they travel right now, they're in Italy. So they'll go and they'll buy art and they'll bring it in and they just have an abundance of it. So it's a very well designed home. And the colors that they choose um, are, are just spectacular. And you walk in and it's like, wow, I really love this. But I would love, I would have such an appreciation for rooms um, with from different ethnicities to be able to see mm. their cultural colors and the way that it's chosen to be displayed in respect for their culture. I think it's just absolutely fascinating. The other thing that I found fascinating was um, the hormonal reactions. So tell me a little bit about that and how color affects that. Let's just take red. I mean, red is a very strong color, but red is um, um, your, your hypothalamus, your pituitary, pituitary, no, sorry, this is English now, pituitary gland um, affects your hormones. And that will, you know, if you're in a room where, where color attacks you, like red can attack you if it's too strong, that will rise your blood pressure because it's got such a strong influence on your, your hormone levels that is controlled by your pituitary gland in your hypothalamus. Um, so yes, I'm definitely going to address how, how, and, and you know, you, th you think it's just logic that red can arouse you or red can make you feel sexy or red can induce you or it can provoke fear. So different people have different reactions, but it can definitely rise your blood pressure and it can stimulate your appetite. You know, so yeah, but that's why McDonald's have the red and the yellows. It's like eat, eat, eat out, eat, eat, eat out because it, it's a you know, it, it, oh gosh, I need to learn how to express this in English, right? No, you're doing perfect. I'm so fascinated. <laughs> I just get so excited. We, 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 there's a whole story about the pink as well, where they used a certain pink. I thought they called, uh, um, they, they called it the drunk tank pink or something that they put in prisoners so that the prisoners can calm down and so on. Yeah. But when it's a certain tonal level, people got so irritated. So you've got to be very careful what tones you use as well when it comes to color, because it's that very, very fine borderline where you can calm someone down or you can start irritating them. Um, yeah. Yeah. I read about the prison story. I've heard about that yeah. one in the past. Yeah. That was completely fascinating. And I'm not going to lie. I, in my younger days, I'm 54 now, so I'm much more mature. And <laughs> so yeah. when I was in my 20s, um, I was hell on wheels, I'm sure. And I had red sports cars. And every time what? I got in it, I Blood felt pressure. empowered. And it's yeah. like, I just, you just get out and you're like, I want to race. And you know, you're yeah. out there in your sexy red car. And it absolutely gave me a feeling of empowerment. So I really yeah. do identify with that. I think it's absolutely fascinating. And then on the other side of that too, I think of calming colors, you know, when you go in and you even just get a massage, can you imagine if you went into like a spa and it was, you know, black and orange or orange and, and blue, like the Broncos and everything was loud. That would be uh, probably overwhelming. The first time, so let me tell you this. I went to Bainbridge Island and I did the psychology of color with Latrice Eisman. And she's the director of the Pantone Color Institute. Mm. So we were there three days immersed into that whole world of psychology of color. And what I learned there, that's the first time that I really realized that this is so important because we shouldn't make assumptions. Um, we had a lot of Korean ladies there as well. Coming from Korea, they, they had the Google translation on during this whole presentation, which was it fascinated me that they were able to listen to a class in English and translate it into Google at the same time. Our homework before that was to create boards the one is tranquility and the one was agitation. And for us in the Western world, tranquility is what? Soothing colors like blues and greens and calming colors. I just came back from Greece at that point. So me, for me, it was whites and blues and, and aquas. And they were standing there doing their presentation and it was mostly bright colors like yellows and pink. Wow. I was in absolute awe that I, I decided there and then don't ever make assumption. What is calming and soothing to me is not the same for anyone in a different culture. Um, so I had to make very clear when I interview my clients, when they say, oh, I need this, this um, serene uh, bathroom, I've got to make very sure that I understand what they mean by serene. They mean by it. That's yes. incredible. Yeah, that was a would, big, big eye, eye opener for me. I would imagine is doing this for a living how much 
fun you get to have because you're, if you're working with different clients with different cultures, yeah, how fun that is to be able to put something together for them because you're doing, when you do some work like this, the end result is you want them to be in awe. You want them to look around and say, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I love it. And for you to nail that, what type of, I want to say this. I know everybody can go to Google and just, you know, Google things, but is there any resources when people are working with someone from a different culture? And let's say we're just talking color. And um, let's say somebody's from Malaysia. How is it that a stager would then do some research? What type of research resources are there? What would they search for in order to help them understand that culture better? Is it just images? Um, you what can do, you, do you can of course of course since two weeks ago you can just do the AI thing right <laughs> because that's the Max. new world we are in. <laughs> um, there are different resources, a lot of books. I like uh, Leatrice Eisman. She wrote about ten books on color psychology. Um, Sensational color. Uh, um, what's her name again? I forgot her name right now. But she's got a whole blog, you know, or a whole page just about color. Sensational color. Kate Smith. Um, I do a lot of research on, uh, you know, using Google images and just really looking at each and every different culture. I literally go and look at cultures from a, um, I, I go to libraries and I go through their books and wherever I can see something about color, I'll, I'll isolate it and write it down. Um, and, and it's not just about, that's a whole different story about combinations of color that I'm also going to talk about. But um, you definitely do a lot of research, Google and books, libraries. And I started using AI to make sure that I've got my facts correct. And yeah. then I, I, I'm going to reconcile all the facts and see that it really works together. I mean, we all know that, In well, I, I assume that people know that India, uh, in, in India, people get married in red attire but not the new young ones i just recently talked to someone that's young and and she lives in america and she said the new the new generation doesn't get married in red and i think okay that's another thing that i really need to understand wow. that this new you know if, if, if someone hires me and they're still young don't assume that red has got a meaning for them so yes you can go and research but listen to your client really just interview your client and listen i think that's really important and when i when I, when I choose their colors, let's say red again, I have about five reds there and I want to make sure that that is the specific red that they are looking for. Because it might be, you know, blue red has got a different meaning than orange red. And I've got to understand what they want. Not like, you know, that there's 40 different sage greens, right? We've all got a different version of sage green. I've got to make sure that my, my client understands. I need to understand what she wants. That you know, don't make assumptions. Yeah. This is, I am so glad that you came on the show today. I'm, I'm not usually, I'm usually more about the business. It's like, tell me, I always tease people and say staging mm -hmm. and, you know, color and the, the texture and the, you know, the color and the shades and the tones and the art and the light work. Yeah. It's, I'm not into it. The business, <laughs> however, the business I'm yeah. jazzed about the business <laughs> end. That's, I'll talk about that all day long, but this is yeah. absolutely fascinating to me. And I think what, um, I think part of it is because you are an expert in it and you, your passion for this. I mean, when I read your submission, when you submitted, I was like, wow, this is, we have to have this session because it's so clear and concise. And it's very evident that you are doing this and it is your passion. And it's, it sounds like it's a calling and you really enjoy it. And to be able to, to be able to a, give that to clients is fantastic, but now to be able to teach that to other people, that's really incredible. Yep, I'm, I'm excited about it, but yeah, thank you so much. Awesome. Well, it's thank been you. such a pleasure to be with you. Tell people how they can reach you if they want to take a class from you. We'll give you a plug. Okay, my phone number is 512-577-5911. My uh, website is called Let's Talk Color. I'm in the process of you know going over to another website provider. And then my email is max at letstalkcolor.com. Awesome. All right. You heard it here first. If you were on the fence about RisaCon, this is one reason to go to RisaCon right here just for this session, because 
like we've said, Max is the expert. This is her passion. She's going to teach you all these things. And it is really important. And now that I'm, I'm looking at this, this is something that could be a, a complete add-on to your business and can just really help you flourish if this is something you want to learn about, something that you want to be passionate about. Even if it's something that you've been interested in and you're thinking about tipping your toe over in that arena and you're just not quite sure, this is the class that's um, going to help you make that decision. So thank you, Max. Everybody thank else. You so much. You're on the fence, get off that fence, go to resaconvention.com, get your ticket today. We will see you in July. Thanks, Shell. Bye-bye.